Good morning, everyone, and welcome to these Rackham graduate exercises. My name is Neil Marsh. I'm Professor of Chemistry and Biological Chemistry, and I chair the Faculty Senate. And on behalf of the entire faculty, I'd like to congratulate all of you graduating today. At this time, I ask all of you to rise, if you are able, for the singing of our national anthem. Good morning. I'm Martin Filbert, Provost of the University of Michigan and also a Professor of Toxicology in the School of Public Health. It is my great pleasure to welcome you to the 2019 Graduate Exercises of the University of Michigan. Let us thank Kelly Bixby for her lovely rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. As we begin our ceremony, I ask you to join me in remembering the students at the University of North Carolina, Charlotte, who died this week. <coughs> We're gathered to honor and celebrate today's graduates. Their accomplishments are many, their creativity is astounding, and their tenacity is impressive. Let us begin, begin by applauding their myriad achievements. We're also pleased to recognize the many ways that families, friends, and faculty members have helped students to reach this moment. Graduates, please join me in thanking the people who have provided you with their love and support. To graduate means literally to move to the next level. You are ready now to make that move, to head off to new places, new positions, and to new communities. Before you do so, it's worth taking just a few moments to reflect on what you've learned in your graduate work. Each of you has been immersed in your field, digging deeply into the accumulated knowledge of chemical engineering, ethnomusicology, neural circuits, economic migration, robotics, or another of our 260 areas of study. You've attained an impressive degree of mastery in your field. I want to suggest, however, that some of the most important work that you've done here has been learning how to advance knowledge. If we do our jobs well, your graduate education has helped you to understand the value of collaborative work. As last month's first first ever look into a black hole demonstrated, to achieve the impossible, we need to put teams of people together, 
sharing and testing ideas, and then doing the many small specialized tasks that advance our knowledge of the universe. You've also learned to appreciate the benefits of gathering varying perspectives as you define and then determine how best to approach a complex problem. As research here at Michigan is showing, to effectively address poverty, it behooves us to draw on insights from economics, anthropology, psychology, education, sociology, public health, urban design, and other fields. Our understanding is much deeper and our solutions to problems are much more robust, more likely to succeed when we draw on diverse areas of expertise. You've discovered perhaps the hard way that there is much to be learned from unexpected outcomes, the experiments that don't work or the data that doesn't quite align with your theory. When our carefully thought out plans don't bring the hope for results, we pause to consider what we missed, what we overlooked, and are pushed to re-examine our assumptions. I emphasize these attributes of graduate education because they are keys to your future success. They will certainly help you in whatever career you have chosen. And quite importantly, they are essential in your lives as active citizens in a world that is in great need of new ideas and innovative approaches to complex problems. The mathematician and philosopher Alfred North Whitehead thought a great deal about the importance of education in the society. In his book, The Aims of Education, he wrote, the proper function of a university is the imaginative acquisition of knowledge. Imagination, the ability humans have to think in creative ways and to expand what we know is critical to our shared future. The world before us poses great challenges. Can we treat the diseases that threaten to overwhelm us? Can we sustain self-governing societies? Will new technologies improve the human condition? How will the emergence of a new art form shape the world and the lives of individuals? We know that it will take both knowledge and imagination to address these questions. We are confident that you have both in great measure. We encourage you to use them as you make your contributions to the world. As you leave the university, we are proud to celebrate your accomplishment and look forward to your continuing successes. It is now my great pleasure to introduce Mark Schliss... <clears throat> Excuse me. I got choked up over you. <laughs> <clears throat> it is now my great pleasure to introduce Mark Schlissel, the 14th president of the University of Michigan. Thank you, Provost Filbert, for the introduction. I, I thought it was the introduction to a coup or something, but that, that's okay. Uh, so thanks very much. Uh, good morning, Michigan graduates, and welcome to all of your family and other guests. I'd also like to welcome the faculty who are here today, many to honor their students and advisees who are graduating. I congratulate the members of the class of 2019 and thank each one of you for advancing discovery and enhancing human knowledge and understanding through your graduate studies at our great university. The pursuit of discovery has been a part of a University of Michigan education since our founding more than 200 years ago. Our early history began with acquisitions and explorations that established a philosophical apparatus and a cabinet of natural history that continues to ground all we do in thought and research. In the decades since, our talented faculty and students have embraced this commitment. And as a result, you graduate today from the number one public university in the nation in research productivity. Our, that's worth a round of applause. <clears throat> our dedication to research for the public good makes U of M a truly special place and you truly special graduates. Michigan is a place where research and education form an immutable bond, where no challenge is too big or too complex, where discovery is not only a product of what we do, it's a purpose. 
While earning your graduate degrees, you've participated in discovery at the highest levels. You've worked alongside your professors to create new knowledge and achieve new levels of understanding. You've formulated new questions and helped redefine academic disciplines. And throughout this exciting, challenging, and sometimes grueling process, you've been preparing to advance our society. You've tasted the life of the mind, and as graduates, you take with you not only advanced degrees from the University of Michigan, but also a command of and a reverence for the discovery process. And discovery begins with having an open mind. As the influential scholar and former U of M faculty member John Dewey wrote, to the open mind, nature and social experience are full of varied and subtle challenges to look further. The truly open mind can evaluate evidence, conduct experiments, and rigorously consider different ideas and perspectives. An open mind enhances innovation and promotes creative problem solving. Our Life Sciences Institute director, Roger Cohn, tells a great story about being open to new perspectives and approaches. His lab sometimes works with high school students, and they're studying hantavirus, which was spread by rodents and can cause respiratory disease in humans that's sometimes fatal. It's most prevalent in rural areas in the southwestern United States. Dr. Cohn says that a researcher in the lab had spent a decade looking unsuccessfully for hantavirus survivors to study their immune responses. The high school students used social media to access their home communities in New Mexico and found two survivors in a matter of weeks. The discovery process also requires asking smart questions, as each of you have done in your graduate studies. Darwin Guevara, a doctoral student in social psychology, formulated a research question around what types of purchases make us the happiest. He then published work that examined the impact of experiential products, such as guitars and books, adding a dimension beyond the material goods and life experiences that were the focus of prior research. Another wonderful feature of the discovery process is the role of serendipity or accident. That doesn't mean all you have to do is be lucky, however. The great 19th century biologist Louis Pasteur pointed out that chance favors the prepared mind. While a great many breakthroughs have honestly happened by accident, a rigorous discovery process was virtually always in place, lighting the way to knowledge. And it's always hard work. One of my faculty colleagues at Johns Hopkins, Peter Agre, was trying to determine the function of specific surface proteins in red blood cells. He would inject messenger RNAs for each protein into frog eggs and observe that one of them resulted in the egg swelling and then bursting open right before his eyes. It turns out he had discovered the first water channel or aquaporin. It allows water to travel across cell membranes and is critical for kidney function amongst many other things. Peter was awarded the 2003 Nobel Prize in Chemistry for this serendipitous but profoundly important discovery. Bridget Quinn, an MFA candidate in the Stamp School of Art and Design, has examined connections between urban areas and nature. She works to raise awareness about water pollution in her hometown of Warren, Michigan. While exploring spaces for an art project in 2017, she discovered off-the-chart counts of E. coli bacteria in two locations in Sterling Heights. These levels are dangerous to public health and the state of Michigan is investigating their source. It's acquiring the best knowledge, the right training, the necessary tools that ensures that you'll never truly be stumbling around in the dark. These are all vital components of the discovery process because the things we discover are almost invariably outside of our current imagination. Often, new knowledge gained in the pursuit of answering one question turns out to be spectacularly useful in a completely different way. Former U of M postdoc Hamilton Smith discovered the mechanism that bacteria use to prevent their infection by viruses. The family of proteins Smith discovered, restriction enzymes, proved to be the key tool that spawned the genetic engineering and biotechnology revolution. Smith won the Nobel Prize for his work in 1978. Major discoveries that affect our lives now weren't even conceptualized just a few years ago. For instance, take the image of the black hole that Provost Filbert mentioned a moment ago. Far closer to home just a few years ago, could we have imagined that we need policies around electric scooters on sidewalks and drones in our airspace? 
Don't leave them in my front yard. The future of the discovery process will certainly be influenced by artificial intelligence, and many of its questions and benefits are being examined right here at U of M. We know that machines are good at identifying patterns, extracting signal from noise, and processing huge amounts of historic and real-time data to inform decisions or even make predictions. Artificial intelligence is speeding up the process of discovery and changing the nature of work while also enhancing human life through applications across many disciplines. Healthcare is just one example. Gashvi Gupta, a master's candidate in our School of Public Health, has written about the potential of a three-way partnership between AI, healthcare provider, and patient in precision health, where data supports human interactions and practice. However, she also notes that practitioners must understand their role in contributing data to health systems and ensuring that machine algorithms are ethical and representative of populations. So, as we approach the development of technology that is capable of general intelligence, or the ability to make decisions independent of humans, we must carefully consider the implications of our work and its unintended consequences. How might AI further aid discovery? How might the nature and purpose of education change as a result? What ethical questions do we need to be asking all along the way? As U of M electrical engineering and computer science professor Jason Corso says, general intelligence is complex and is a quagmire of possibility and uncertainty. Class of 2019, your experience here with the process of discovery has positioned you to lead. In the labs and companies and universities and organizations and communities you'll join next. I urge you to keep an open mind, continue to ask questions, base your decisions on deep thought and the rigorous analysis of data, and share your work so it has the greatest impact. Our world needs you. Your discoveries will carry forward the great legacy built through the generations at the University of Michigan and change the world for the better. There is no higher purpose. So thank you all very much, congratulations on your graduation, and go blue. Oh 
storm, keep your chin up high, and don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of a storm is a golden sky, and the sweet silver song. Nobel Laureate, Professor of Cell and Developmental Biology at the University of California, Berkeley, and Howard Hughes Medical Institute investigator Randy Sheckman is one of the world's preeminent biologists. In 2013, he, James Rothman, and Tom Sudhoff shared the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for their discoveries of machinery regulating vesicle traffic, a major transport system in our cells. The genes and proteins his laboratory discovered in yeast have counterparts in all eukaryotes and have been implicated in several human genetic diseases. His research provided the knowledge necessary for the biotechnology industry to use yeast as a platform to produce clinically important human secreted proteins, including recombinant human insulin. The world supply of recombinant hepatitis B vaccine is also produced in yeast using the vesicle transport and secretion system that Randy and his students discovered. Because hepatitis B infection is a major cause of liver cancer, once fully deployed, this vaccine has the potential to reduce the incidence of liver cancer by 90%. He's a charter member of U of M's Life Science Institute Scientific Advisory Board and an authoritative spokesperson on the critical role public universities play in advancing science. Professor Sheckman is also a member of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, the American Philosophical Society, and the National Academy of Sciences. Tomorrow, we look forward to presenting him the honorary degree Doctor of Science at our spring commencement ceremony. Dr. Sheckman, we are honored to welcome you. I invite you to address our graduates.
Thank you, President Schlissel, colleagues, graduates, family members, and friends. Welcome to graduation, my favorite activity of the year. Many people from my generation didn't attend such ceremonies because they were considered too conformist. Of course, I've made up for that almost every year of the 43 I've been on the faculty at UC Berkeley, including one year where I was able to introduce my parents, whom I deprived of my college and PhD ceremonies. Over the years, I've witnessed beach balls being tossed around the Greek theater and Zellerbach at Cal, a cacophony of air horns, air horns, raucous cheering sections, graduates wearing virtually nothing under their robes, <laughs> and students doing backflips across the stage, though not both at the same time, at least not yet. <laughs> Congratulations. Most of you are now free to dump all those random facts that you crammed in over the years. The operators, operator's manual that comes with your degree does not call for you to remember the names of the nine muses, the quadratic equation, or the order of the planets, as Billy Collins memorably noted in his poem, Forgetfulness. The fact that ATP is the energy currency of your cells is but a fleeting memory jumbled together with the long hours of study in the libraries and laboratories, parties and laughter that no doubt filled your days and nights these past years. So what was Michigan all about, other than as a means to deliver you to the next station in your life? A career in law, business, engineering, medicine, education, the arts, and the health sciences. We like to think that you learned something more than the mere facts that fill the hours of lectures and reams of notes. As you walk away from this ceremony, consider where you were, where you are now, compared to your first days at Michigan. If we succeeded, you are now more critical of facts and sources. You will question the truth of some common wisdom and ask for the evidence that supports a broad assertion. When a drug company boasts of some new wonder cure, you'll remain skeptical unless the facts and controls are spelled out. When you read about a new discovery, you'll want to know what was learned about the process and how, more, and how it's more deeply understood and not simply the practical value of the findings. You will not accept on authority the word of some big shot professor, even a Cal Nobel laureate, if he or she uses his position to espouse some unsubstantiated nonsense. We win if your mind is stretched but not filled. And what keeps us going? those of us who do need to remember the amino acids and the genetic code? Why do we fight the battle for research funding, tenure, endless repetition of the lecture material, and many of the same questions and concerns about extra points on the regrades? <laughs> it's the certain knowledge that we will witness year in and year out the same thrill of understanding displayed on your bright faces as you march in and out of our classrooms, laboratories, and offices. It is the magic of discovery when a research student is the first to realize some new principle that shines a tiny light on an unexplored corner of a cell, or to discover and translate a new text, or to reinterpret a well-known bit of history. We keep going because those of us before made this institution one of the finest public universities in the country and it is our obligation to pass this on in even better shape. We do this because the University of Michigan has provided generations of middle and working class families with an opportunity to build a better life. The real world comes to Ann Arbor. The elite private universities consider their middle class to be families with an income between $180,000 and $200,000 a year. But 70% of the college students in the US attend public institutions where family income is closer to the overall national average. I've remained a faculty member at Berkeley for over 40 years, in part because public universities are the most effective engine of social mobility in our society. 
Opportunities for education in public universities exploded in the 1960s. The space race initiated by Dwight Eisenhower and John Kennedy led to a substantially increased federal investment in science and science education. <clears throat> we enjoy a privileged position in the world because of the wise investment of the government in the support of University and Research Institute Basic Science. Government funding of basic research in the U.S. started after World War II with a transformative report, Science, Endless Frontiers, written by Vannevar Bush, the advisor, uh, science advisor to Presidents Roosevelt and Truman. He wrote, scientific progress on a broad front results from the free play of free intellects working on subjects of their own choice in the manner dictated by their curiosity for exploration of the unknown. Freedom of inquiry must be preserved under any plan for government support of science. My fellow Nobel laureates of 2013, Jim Rothman and Tom Sudhoff, discovered the molecular basis of neurotransmitter release at the junction of nerve cells and bet between nerve cells and muscle cells. The molecules they probed are the targets of a potent toxin produced by a poisonous bacterium that causes botulism. No one could have predicted a practical application of this knowledge, yet Botox, the commercial term for that toxin, is now a multi-billion dollar industry. The uses of Botox extend well beyond the cosmetic, including the treatment of debilitating neuromuscular diseases such as afflicted the concert pianist Leon Fleischer, who after 30 years of paralysis has now been returned to the concert stage. The work in my laboratory probed the molecular basis of protein secretion in baker's yeast. We had no notion of any practical application of this work, and yet after we learned that yeast cells use a pathway fundamentally the same as human cells, the biotechnology industry applied this knowledge to engineer the production of commercially useful quantities of human proteins. One third of the world's supply of recombinant human insulin is produced by fermentation in yeast. And yet, we face a new skepticism of science, grounded in the politics of energy and commerce, challenging the consensus scientific view that our climate is influenced by human activity. We must welcome skepticism, but again, the challenge must be on the basis of experiment, observation, and theory, not blind dogma or a gut feeling. We hear arguments that the jury is still out and that we, we must continue to observe, which is of course true, but the arguments ring hollow when it comes to the application of our knowledge to public policy, and they remind us of the congressional testimony of the executives of the tobacco industry who in 1994 asserted that, quote, cigarettes may cause lung cancer, heart disease, and other problems, but the evidence is not conclusive, unquote. Sound familiar? Science progresses by the slow and steady accumulation of observation, theory, and experiment. Facts are established only after extensive and sometimes critical evaluation, with opposing sides contesting alternative results and interpretations. The 20th century Austrian-born British philosopher of science, Karl Popper, once wrote, science must begin with myths and with the criticism of myths. For Popper, science is unique in its systematic approach to errors and its emphasis on self-correction. Popper was best known for his doctrine of falsifiability. In other words, the importance of the testability of a hypothesis. What distinguishes the scientific method from other methods of investigation is that it is a method attempting to discover the weakness of a theory, to refute or to falsify the theory. Science has nothing to do with the quest for certainty or probability or re reliability, wrote Popper. We're not interested in establishing scientific theories as secure or certain or probable. We're only interested in criticizing them and in testing them, hoping to find out where we are mistaken. 
Our knowledge of the age of the Earth and of the universe and the principle of biological evolution are solid products of the scientific method, having been established over decades, indeed centuries of investigation. And yet, the scientific method holds that these principles must remain subject to skeptical inquiry and refinement. But the challenges must themselves be based on scientific reasoning and not the dogma of skeptics who would rely on myths from thousands of years ago that are not themselves subject to the scientific method. Such skeptics come and go, but the fruit of human knowledge will remain and advance. We face a determined opposition that would misrepresent the prevailing view of expert scientists and worse yet, would attempt to expunge from government sources any mention of climate change and cut off funding for continuing to advance the science even while asserting that the science must continue. But how can it continue without funding or access to the store of knowledge already accumulated by government scientists? Fortunately, this country is not alone in the march of progress and climate science will advance elsewhere and through the efforts of progressive states and in the private sector, where, for example, unemployment in renewable energy industries is accelerating at a pace far outstripping the fossil fuel industry. We may sustain a temporary setback here in the US, but the march of progress, fueled by the scientific method, will advance and ultimately tackle our greatest challenges. These are the challenges and opportunities that you now face. Go blue. Thank you very much for your address, Dr. Sheckman. It is my pleasure, on behalf of the Horace H. Rackham School of Graduate Studies, to offer brief remarks. I am Mike Solomon, the Rackham Dean. In a few moments, you are going to proceed across the stage and receive one of the most important pieces of paper that you've earned in your life. It's an exciting feeling because it was almost, and I know that, because it was almost 25 years ago that I received one of the most important pieces of paper in my life. And I'm talking, of course, about an unexpected piece of mail that came to me from Australia in early 1996. I was finishing my doctoral work and running out of time to apply for a postdoctoral research position when one day my lab mate approached me holding a letter from the University of Melbourne and saying, hey Mike, you could change your life, move to a new continent. He was joking, but the very serious truth was that I didn't have a job. And the more I looked into it, I realized there was someone at Melbourne working both in the field in which I had done my doctoral study, as well as in a new field for which I was interested in moving my career. A couple of months later, and a mere three days after I turned in my dissertation in Berkeley, California, I got on a plane. 22 hours after that, I stepped out of an airport on another continent in another hemisphere, facing unfamiliar territory in every sense of the phrase. There were some immediate challenges. For one, due to a cruel twist of fate and the Earth's tilt, I have an extra winter in my life. <laughs> For another, I somehow had the hardest time explaining to the people in the hotel where I initially lived that there were no spatulas or tongs in my kitchenette. Apparently, they do not use the word utensils in Australia. Turns out the right word was cutlery. Cutlery, everyone. <laughs> but there were greater and much more significant challenges as well. It was a time of uncertainty, confusion, and self-doubt, but also one of excitement and growth. And though the outcome of my postdoc was not what I originally had expected, I do know that I would not be here right now without the experience and the mentor a world away with whom I was fortunate enough to work. Now, I don't mention all of this to illustrate that I was particularly brave about these things. And I don't mention it to encourage you to go globetrotting to parts unknown where you will find yourself cooking without utensils in a strange hotel. <laughs> I mention it because taking risks and navigating the unknown can benefit us in ways we can never imagine. I mention it to reinforce the idea that I'm still on my journey, just like everyone else on this stage is still on theirs, just like the friends, the faculty, the family who are here with you today and who have offered you their invaluable support 
encouragement, and mentorship are on theirs. We are all continually shaping our own stories. You, as holders of advanced degrees from this university, are uniquely equipped to shape your own path forward, to step out into new fields, to even create new fields, and launch into directions that will carry you farther than any trans-Pacific flight could. You have unsurpassed depth of knowledge in your specialty. You are experts in its latest methods. We know from our own research that you will bring your training and expertise to bear upon an expanded set of career pathways compared to those who came a generation before you. Your paths and what you will accomplish are undetermined. There are so many different ways in which your work and your scholarship can ultimately impact the public good. When the Rackham Graduate School was created, one of its aims was to bring individuals from different disciplines together as we are today. In fact, it was the specific reason that the Rackham Building was constructed as a home for graduate students. It was understood that there was much more to be learned by reaching out across disciplines, from exposing yourself to the unfamiliar and from opening yourself to possibility. As you go out from Michigan today, I encourage you to continue to embrace those ideas, to carry them forward, and to continually find inspiration in the unexpected. Because really, that inspiration is what can change your life. Congratulations. <laughs> Mr. President, I now have the honor on behalf of the faculties of the university and the Horace H. School of Graduate Studies to present candidates to you for the various master's and certificate degrees and to recommend them for the degrees named. Will the candidates for the degrees please rise and remain standing as their degrees are named? Master of Arts. There is it. Master of Design. Master of Fine Arts. Masters of Landscape Architecture. Master of Public Administration. Master of Public Policy. Master of Science. Master of Science and Engineering. Master of Urban and Regional Planning and Certificate of Graduate Studies. On behalf of the Board of Regents of the University of Michigan, I congratulate you on your graduation. It's now our pleasure to invite master's degree candidates to come forward and be greeted.
recognize individually the recipients of doctoral degrees awarded by the university. I invite you to notice the various disciplines represented in the degree recipients as they're introduced. Uh, you'll receive a remarkable insight into the diversity and breadth of the intellectual and creative mission carried forth here at the University of Michigan. By the authority of the state of Michigan vested in the regents of this university, and by them delegated to me, we shall now confer the degrees which have been recommended by the faculties. Michael Solomon, Dean of the Horace H. Rackham School of Graduate Studies and Vice Provost for Academic Affairs Graduate Studies will preside. The candidates for the doctoral degrees of the Horace H. Rackham School of Graduate Studies will please rise when, when their degree is called and remain standing. Doctor of Musical Arts. Doctor of Philosophy. <laughs> Mr. President, on behalf of the Executive Board of the Horace H. Rackham School of Graduate Studies, I present the candidates for the degrees named. I confer upon each of you the degree for which you've been nominated admitting you to its rights, honors, and privileges, and charging you with its responsibilities. In consideration of those seated behind you, please uh, return to your seats until you're conducted to the platform where you'll be hooded and individually introduced. The doctoral degrees are the highest awarded by the university. We come now to the hooding of the doctoral degree recipients, recognizing them individually. The ritual of receiving the doctoral hood is part of a historical tradition that began with the earliest foundations of European universities. Hooding has been a central feature of commencements since the 12th century, when popes, kings, or emperors authorized the conferral of the doctoral hood. They were certifying that the recipients were master teachers who had earned ust ubique docenti, which is the right to teach anywhere. Each doctoral graduate has undertaken original scholarship in the completion of a dissertation guided by a faculty member who chaired the student's dissertation committee. Many of these dissertation chairs are with us today and will be personally hooding their students, welcoming them to the community of scholars. Before their names are called, each is draped with a hood completing their doctoral academic regalia. The colors on the hoods identify first the university attended and second the academic field of study. The university's colors, the University of Michigan's colors, maize and azure blue, can be seen in the lining of the hoods the doctoral candidates will wear today. The border color, which is the field of study, can be identified in the list of academic colors in the program. David Adrian, Computer Science and Engineering. Hedia Alavi Tamadoni, Biomedical Engineering. Abdullah Al Shelahi, Industrial and Operations Engineering. Rachel Altschuler, Pharmacology. <laughs> Mohammed Amjadi, Electrical Engineering. <laughs> Beck Andrews, Material Science and Engineering. Jacqueline Antonovich, 
history. Ahmad Ali Ansari, Aerospace Engineering. Chloe Armstrong, Philosophy. Umar Aslam, Chemical Engineering. Stefan Auni, American Culture. Zelalem Birhanu Aweke, Computer Science and Engineering. Huda Bande Amadi, Anthropology. Juliet Becker, Astronomy and Astrophysics. Sukmani Kaur Bedi, Microbiology and Immunology. Alexander Benken, Electrical Engineering. Sumit Bagnagar, Chemical Engineering. Noah Bland, History. Sabrina Babsin Salazar, Educational Studies. Mara Ballard, Philosophy. Shana Bradford, Molecular and Cellular Pathology. And her son. Tim Brooks, Aerospace Engineering. Autumn Bullard, Biomedical Engineering. David Bushart, Molecular and Integrative Physiology. Grace Bushnell, Biomedical Engineering. Fushi Tsai, Electrical Engineering. Rodney Carruthers, Near Eastern Studies. Liam Casey, Chemical Engineering. Susanna Chan, Cellular and Molecular Biology. Yiring Zhang, Computer Science and Engineering. Ivan Char Lopez, American Culture. <laughs> Kai Chen, Mechanical Engineering. Qi <laughs> Chen, Computer Science and Engineering. <laughs> Yu Shao Chen, Mechanical Engineering. Yu Heng Cheng, Electrical and Computer Engineering. Enash Chudabayeva, Anthropology and Toxicology. Robert Kisena, Mechanical Engineering. Zheng Ping Chu, Design Science. Yun Jun Choi, Electrical Engineering. Kyo Jin Cho, Electrical and Computer Engineering. Kimberly Chuang, Philosophy. Cornelius Silliers, Chemical Engineering. Timothy Collard, Aerospace Engineering.
Ajita Christi David, Chemistry. Christina Cross, Public Policy and Sociology. Colleen Crouch, Mechanical Engineering. Corey Cunningham, Cellular and Molecular Biology. Federica Cuomo, Biomedical Engineering. Swayan Data, Computer Science and Engineering. Matt Demongren, Higher Education. Aniket Anand Deshmukh, Electrical and Computer Engineering. Vikas Diman, Electrical Engineering Systems. Xinjiao Ding, Bioinformatics. John Doring White, Social Work and Anthropology. Lindsay Drake, Medicinal Chemistry. <laughs> William Dunham, Aerospace Engineering. <laughs> Allison Dupsik, Microbiology and Immunology. <laughs> Jacqueline Durkin. Neuroscience. Martin Dwelle, Environmental Engineering. Anna Edmonds, Philosophy. Nilufar Imami, Architecture. Lauren Eriks Klein, English Language and Literature. Maya Farad Wellman, English Language and Literature. Christopher Fitzpatrick, Neuroscience. Annabel Flores Arenas, Cellular and Molecular Biology. Leanne Foster, Macromolecular Science and Engineering. Xiao Cheng Chong, Mechanical Engineering. Jacob France, Aerospace Engineering. Victor Fuentes, Industrial and Operations Engineering. Lauren Gamble, Aerospace Engineering. Joseph Gaudet, American Culture. Amelia Glazier, Molecular and Integrative Physiology. Alexander Giesing, Statistics. Danielle Goodman, Cellular and Molecular Biology. Justin Gray, Aerospace Engineering. Crystal Ann Green, Nuclear Engineering and Radiological Sciences. Emilio Grosso, Chemistry. Tanvi Gujarati, Physics. 
Han Kuo, Electrical Engineering. Alexander Guaharia, Applied Physics. Zhang Mu Ha, Nuclear Engineering and Radiological Sciences. Kelsey Hallinan, Biophysics. Allegra Hawkins, Cancer Biology. Sarah Haynes, Chemistry. Haley Heaton, Linguistics. Mohsen Heidari Kuzani, Electrical Engineering Systems. Anne Heminger, Musicology. David Hitala, Chemical Engineering. Elsa Hines, Chemistry. David Hong, Electrical Engineering Systems. Thomas Hopkins, Chemistry. Kupchin Huang, Computer Science and Engineering. Rebecca Huffman, English Language and Literature. <laughs> Ali Hussein, Near Eastern Studies. Lisbeth Iglesias Rios, Epidemiological Science. Sun Min Zhang, Electrical Engineering. Hutan Jebelli, Civil Engineering. Emmanuel Jacquois, Neuroscience. Hakeem Jefferson, Political Science. Yiding Ji, Electrical and Computer Engineering. Yunhan Jia, Computer Science and Engineering. Jiqing Chang, Electrical and Computer Engineering. Jennifer Jones, Chemical Engineering. Jessica Joslin, Higher Education. Thomas Yerkew, Biological Chemistry. Gareth Keeves, Business Administration. Rosalind Kent, Chemistry. John Kilgore, Mathematics. Yun J. Kim, Earth and Environmental Sciences. Ryan Kitson. Aerospace Engineering. Molly Kleinman, Higher Education. John Klusterman, Computer Science and Engineering. Avish Kursari, Electrical Engineering. Brittany Kuhn, Neuroscience.
Gregory Ledbaugh, Electrical Engineering Systems. <laughs> Jong Hyo Lee, Medicinal Chemistry. <laughs> Jin Wu Lee, Mechanical Engineering. Ju Young Lee, American Culture. <laughs> San Yon Lee, Mechanical Engineering. <laughs> Stephen Lee, Chemistry. <laughs> Bowen Lee, Electrical Engineering Systems. Dan Lee, Pharmaceutical Sciences. <laughs> Chao Turu Lee, Electrical Engineering. <laughs> Yi Jie Lee, Biomedical Engineering. <laughs> Wu Tae Lim, Electrical Engineering. Chi Che Lin, Computer Science and Engineering. <laughs> Troy Long, Industrial and Operations Engineering. <laughs> Jeffrey Lowe, Chemical Engineering. Hao Chen Lu, Molecular and Integrative Physiology. <laughs> Rene Ludlam, Astronomy and Astrophysics. <laughs> Kurt Lundin, Civil Engineering. <laughs> Sabrina Babsin Salazar, Educational Studies. Zhang Yi Luo, Mechanical Engineering. <laughs> Lauren Mackey, Aerospace Engineering. <laughs> Katarina Makaravic, Chemistry. <laughs> Yanshrin Mao, Industrial and Operations Engineering. Ryan Marcott, Computer Science and Engineering. Sarah Mass, History. <laughs> Teresa Mao, Immunology. Amit Mazajolu, Mechanical Engineering. Andrew McAllister, Applied Physics. James McNally, Music, Musicology. Blake Miller, Political Science. Tunwin Meta, Computer Science and Engineering. Felicitas Catarina Mitterreda, Survey Methodology. Jessica D. Moorman, Communications.
Emily Morin, Pharmaceutical Sciences. David Morphew, Classical Studies. Josh Morrison, Film, Television, and Media. Mikhail Murashov, Physical and Pharmaceutical Sciences. Takumi Moriyama, Mathematics. Ariel Murphy Leonard, Material Science and Engineering. Yunsa Na, Civil Engineering. Tal Nagorni, Electrical Engineering. Mohit Nahata, Chemical Engineering. Jason Natras, Nuclear Engineering and Radiological Sciences. Fabian Neuner, Political Science. Marcos Nunez, Biophysics. <laughs> Olivia Palmer, Biomedical Engineering. <laughs> Yenxin Pan, Design Science. Si Hong Poon, Mechanical Engineering. Hayson Park, Mechanical Engineering. Niket Prakash, Mechanical Engineering. Tao Kao, Mechanical Electrical Engineering. Michelle Randolph, Higher Education. Vimal Rati, Physics. Bruno Renero Hanran, Anthropology and History. Evan Reynolds, Biostatistics. James Ropa, Molecular and Cellular Pathology. Aaron Ross, Physics. Andrew Rutledge, History. Emma Sachs, Classical Art and Archaeology. Nima Salehi Sadgiani, Industrial and Operations Engineering. Tatiana Saleski, Chemical Engineering. Sayed Amin Sandulgaz Zardini, Electrical Engineering. Kristen Schimmert, Biophysics. Camber Schwartz, Astronomy and Astrophysics. Srinagesh Shurba, Electrical Engineering Systems. Albana Shihai, Political Science. Vikram Shende, Chemical Biology. Witan Shen, Electrical Engineering. Yukiko Shimizu, 
Aerospace Engineering. Sidesh Dilip Shinde, Mechanical Engineering. Huan Yi Shu, Mechanical Engineering. Nicholas Silva, Neuroscience. Shirun Sherma, Survey Methodology. Ripu Daman Singh, Mechanical Engineering. Sierra Sibbles, Nuclear Engineering and Radiological Sciences. Lori Smithy, Architecture. Sarah Ashley Snyder, Material Science and Engineering. Yongbei Sun, Electrical and Computer Engineering. James Song, Chemical Biology. Alexandra Soa, Medicinal Chemistry. Matthew Spellings, Chemical Engineering. Lauren Steimley, Industrial and Operations Engineering. Rachel Stevenson, Molecular, Cellular and Developmental Biology. Austin Stewart, Musicology. James Strickland, Political Science. <laughs> Stephanie Sue, Physics. <laughs> Wenbo Sun, Industrial and Operations Engineering. <laughs> Rachel Surovic. Biomedical Engineering. Elliot Tackett, Conducting, Wind. Zhao Wang, Vincent Tan, Biostatistics. Wei Tong, Electrical Engineering. Yemin Tang. Electrical Engineering. Mariah Taylor, Architecture. Matthew Taylor, Molecular and Integrative Physiology. Yu Wei Chen, Chemistry. Vasilis Triodopoulos, Mechanical Engineering. Chun Chen Tu, Statistics. Ali Turula, Immunology. Christina Valianatos, Human Genetics. Angela Vidal Rodriguez, Higher Education. Philip Wu, Biomedical Engineering. Katarina Wagner Karshner, History. Joseph Walker, Ecology and Evolutionary Biology. Robert Walker, Mathematics. <laughs> Jinchen Wang, Statistics. <laughs> G. 
Jin Ji Wang, Chemistry. Jill Wenderot, Material Science and Engineering. Howley Wenhold, Communications. Sydney Williams, Biomedical Engineering. Emily Wilson, English and Education. Stephen Wilson, Computer Science and Engineering. Alton Worthington, Political Science. Mary Vrublevsky, History. Don Yu Wu, Civil Engineering. Victor Wu, Industrial and Operations Engineering. <laughs> Wen Kun Wu, Material Science and Engineering. <laughs> Yukai Wu, Physics. <laughs> Jian Xia, Environmental Engineering. Yu Jong Yang, Political Science. <laughs> Dok Jung Yun, Mechanical Engineering. <laughs> Yi Yuan, Electrical Engineering. <laughs> Yi Ling Zhang, Industrial and Operations Engineering. Yu Xi Zhang, Naval Architecture and Marine Engineering. <laughs> Jia Zhou, Pharmaceutical Sciences. <laughs> Yi Chen, Mechanical Engineering. <laughs> Daniel Epling, Pharmaceutical Science. Lillian Hale, Chemistry. <laughs> Mina Jafari, Chemistry and Scientific Computing. <laughs> Darby Morris, Architecture. <laughs> Tristan Childress, Earth and Environmental Sciences. Chu Min Zhao, Mechanical Engineering. Wei Dong Chen, Industrial and Operations Engineering. Yir Hei Son, Asian Languages and Cultures. Yao Shi, Electrical Engineering. Emily Shearer, English Language and Literature. <laughs> Yue Wang, Computer Science and Engineering.
graduates and candidates presented today, please rise. Will the regents, deans, officers, the faculty, and all others on the platform please rise? Will all the family members and invited guests who share in the recognition of these candidates presented today please rise? I now welcome our graduates to the community of scholars. We look forward to benefiting from the contributions your education has prepared you to make in our world. Congratulations. I invite you all to be seated for a moment. It's now my pleasure to introduce Ellen Agris, Chair of the Board of Directors of the Alumni Association of the University of Michigan. Well, hey, hey, congratulations from the Alumni Association to all of you new alumni. I know you're anxious to go celebrate your achievements, uh, but hang on for a minute, and I promise this will just take a minute. I promise. I've saved the best for last. You've been congratulated and praised by your families, your friends, and the illustrious academics and honorees on this platform. But now that you've received your degrees, I can present you with what I know you will think is the best reward of all. A one year, absolutely free, no strings attached, membership in the University of Michigan Alumni Association. Now what could be better than that, right? Let's hear it. Uh, seriously though, seriously though, I hope you come to see your membership in the association as a way to stay connected to this great university and the friends you've made here. Our goal is to provide you with ways to keep those connections and make new ones, as well as to support your future endeavors and interests and to help you maximize your professional and personal success. I know you will continue Michigan's proud achievements and traditions just as 200 years worth of past graduates have already done. So congratulations, welcome to the Alumni Association, and go blue! Thank you. Um, following the singing of the yellow and blue, the audience is requested to remain at their seats until the recessional march of the platform party has been completed. Then you are all cordially invited to a reception honoring the graduates, their families and friends. The reception will be outside on Ingalls Mall and we look forward to seeing you all there. Now, please join us in singing the university's alma mater, The Yellow and Blue. <laughs> 